Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Drunk Bible Study. This show's mission is to read every single word of the greatest story ever told. A warning to our listeners. The hosts of this show are sinners, but they're doing their best. There will be drinking and there may be some swears. They did say they'd try to keep it clean, but I wouldn't put my money on it. I'm Emily, and this is Drunk Bible Study, where my good friends Dedeker and Jace teach me, a born and raised atheist, all about the Bible. Wow. I feel like it was a hundred years ago when we were discussing Ezekiel <laughs> all together in a room, like echoing at each other. <laughs> echoing with mic issues, week. just yeah. all over the place. Hopefully those of you listening to the recorded version won't get all that. It'll just sound wonderful and lovely and not yeah. terrible on your ears at all. <laughs> Definitely. Well, anyways... Here we are. It's time for a new book. It's a new day. Which is our favorite thing in the world. New book. And it's going to be a short book. <sighs> yes. A short, I love short it. little book. I think the last time we had a short book was Ruth, right? Ages ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ages and ages ago. I don't even think I'm going to ask when this guy is going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll need to. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think they'll they'll bring him into existence and then kill him off in... I don't know. I know nothing about this person. Mm. I, I didn't... Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I don't know much about Hosea either. Do you know literally anything that you can share with us, Jace? I know we're going to do a deeper dive probably in the bonus, but I'm just wondering if there's any previews, any hints, any tips... Tricks. Well, yeah, yes, I've got. I can give you a little bit, and we'll we'll talk more in the bonus um, about this. But okay, basically, my understanding is that all of the minor prophets that we're going to be reading next, because we're going to go wham bam through all twelve of the minor prophets, aka okay. the twelve, um, and I think that all of them basically lived around this same time as these other prophets. So it's all going to be similarly about you know, being captured or about to be captured or having had been captured and getting their redemption. It's all going to kind of be on those same themes that we've been on. I can also tell you that Hosea, according to what I found on Wikipedia, is he's the only prophet of this time of Israel who left any written prophecy, like who actually left any written stuff and it hasn't just been oral tradition and then eventually written down. Or like written by a scribe, because we've had some prophets who do that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which. Yeah. Hmm. So it's not like he wrote the book per se, but rather that he just wrote some the stuff. prophecies. Some stuff, okay. yeah, that, that then got okay. made into a book. <laughs> okay. He left his live journal around and we can all <laughs> yeah. look at it right. and appreciate it now. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay, cool. Also, just to give you a preview of what's coming, right? So we're doing the 12 and we're going to be doing all the minor prophets until, let's see, our last one is going to be the last week of June. So we're going to be doing this for, what's that make it like three months. But, but here's easy. the wild. Just mm-hmm. boom, 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 boom. Here's, yeah, here's the wild part. Yeah. 12 though. Hosea is going to last three episodes. Mm-hmm. And he's tied for the longest of all the books we're going to be reading Whoa. over the next three months. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> This is a new dawn. The only other three episode one is so, Zechariah. Like my bosom is just <laughs> tingling oh. with excitement. I felt it right, right up in there in the heart, <laughs> that area. Yeah. We're getting some stuff from the chat saying that this book is one big trigger warning. So uh, just for y'all out a, there. No, I need hope. I just need to feel hopeful right now. I know. Right now, every, all just of us... Just going to feel hopeful. I see. All of us need to feel some hope in this world. I feel like this by this book is one big trigger warning. You mean the whole Bible. Yes. Right? You're it's right. constant. You're it's right. constant rape and murder and eating children. And mm-hmm. it's, it's just... Yeah. Yes. Misogyny. <laughs> eating yeah. children. That too. If you're sensitive to any of those things, just don't read the Bible. <laughs> just don't do yeah. it. So as far as casting goes, because we don't have a ton of time to deliberate yeah. on each of these boys slash girls slash whoever it is that we want to cast. Mm -hmm. David, our listener, did suggest bringing in Javier Bardem for Hosea. And now another... Interesting. I know nothing about him, but I like (laughs) it. Now there's another role in uh, Hosea's wife 
who we'll also have to bring in. But I'm, I think I'm okay with waiting to see how Jose's wife kind of plays out here. But we should at least bring in Javier Bardem for a reading. Yeah, okay. And we'll have to probably to make a decision today. Have we already cast Penelope Cruz in something? Because that is Javier Bardem's actual wife. Well, that would be interesting. See, I had initially thought, it looks like we have not cast Penelope Cruz yet. So they could be a power couple, celebrity couple yeah. for this. So I have a different pitch for Jose's wife. But I think we need to get there first. And then we okay. can discuss. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Are we, are cool. we ready to do this? No. What are we drinking? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is drunk I'm, Bible study, Jace, not yeah. sober Bible study. <sighs> Come on. Gosh, forgive me. Better Manhattan. Forgive me. No. This is a, a drink oh. that I've created that I'm going to call Gomer's Medicine or something like that. Gomer Piles Medicine? Gomer is the okay. name of Hosea's wife. <laughs> Um, oh, really? So this is <laughs> quite a name. brandy with some bitters. Okay. And it's actually quite nice. It's just sort of... I have brandy. Yeah, yeah. Not a good brandy. I think it was like seven bucks, so <laughs> I don't... Okay, well, this is a little bit better brandy than that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the bitters kind of makes it so it's not just sweet and syrupy. Like, it's got a little bit more interest going on. Um, and so it's, it's quite nice. Cute. Lovely. Yeah. How about you, Dedeker? I'm having a hot toddy because it's cold. It's cold here in Seattle. We got snow, so yeah. trying to trying to cozy it up. That's amazing. It's cold for me. It's 57 outside. <laughs> Don't, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I know. <laughs> what refreshing summertime drink are you drinking in that 57 degree weather? So I am drinking a blended margarita because... Um, it was National Margarita Day last Tuesday, oh, and I missed fun. it. I didn't have a margarita, so I did today. So I decided my March drinks are going to be spicy cocktails. This is a spicy pineapple margarita. Now, oh. I use these bad boys. This is a Thai chili. It is not for the faint of heart. Oh, my. Wow. And I, I love spicy food. I, I can handle a lot of spice, and I only put one of these babies in here. Oh boy, I will be sipping this drink. <laughs> Yikos. Um, nice. Yeah, all it is is just basically pineapple and lime juice, uh, frozen pineapple, lime juice, and one of these along with um, some Contro and agave. It's excellent if you want to do it without the spice, you definitely can, or you can use a less spicy pepper like a jalapeno. Or even, yeah, it's something that's not this, because my goodness. <laughs> Just be careful, everyone. A, a green bell pepper in there. Be careful out there. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah, a green bell pepper. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, green bell pepper. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All righty. So now we can do it. As first. we have been teasing, we are starting the book of Hosea. We're going to be reading the first four chapters today, and then the next two episodes are going to be five chapters, because we are just going to blow through this like 80 miles an hour through a residential street. It's going to be <laughs> amazing. Do not try that at home. <laughs> As we get started, we want to remind everyone to read responsibly and drink responsibly. You can drink along with us or you can listen while you're in the car. But please do not do both at the same time. And with that, it is time for Isaiah. I mean, Hosea. <laughs> chapter one. <laughs> Hosea chapter one. I like to title that song, Hosea Ain't So. I will not go. Yeah. I, uh, okay, Hosea carry me home. chapter one. The word of Yahweh came to Hosea, the son of Beeri. Oh, perfect for this show. Yeah, great. Beary. The son of Beeri in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. When Yahweh spoke at the first by Hosea, Yahweh said to Hosea, Go take for yourself a wife of prostitution and children oh. of unfaithfulness. What, oh, huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> what kind? Pause, pause what? right away. <laughs> yeah. It's the deal, God. <laughs> okay, yep. hold on. So Yahweh straight up talks to him and is like, Hey, yep. go get okay. a sex worker wife. Mm -hmm. And okay. what was it? Dirty children? Children, children of, unfaithfulness. of unfaithfulness. So as in like children she's had illegitimately. Mm. 
So these are all fantastic questions. And (laughs) this is something I actually looked into a little bit before we started. And one thing is that the translation of that description of her really varies by translation. Okay. So, for example, um, like the King James Version and and the message and Eugene call her a whore. Good. Good Say, job, so Eugene. Go, go. Calm down, Eugene. So the, Eugene says, find a whore and marry her. Jeez. And the King James Version says, <laughs> go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and a children of whoredoms. <laughs> Whoredom sounds like kingdom, and that I'm into, like the idea of... Okay. Yeah, that's cute. I like I'm it. a prostitute yeah. or a whore or a sex worker, whatever you want to call it, but I just have this land... <laughs> a kingdom. That yeah. I rule yes. over with my sex positivity. Yeah. hmm Exactly. Uh, we like but that. then other ones, such as the NIV, translate it as just go marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her. Promiscuous woman. Okay, so she's not a professional. She's just... Well, we don't know. I mean, it's un- ambiguous, but that's why I think Nelly Furtado should be yeah. cast as the promiscuous girl. Oh, the promiscuous right? girl. Because oh. Emily, you were just singing it, so I think it makes sense. Well, okay. Wow. More questions, and maybe, maybe, maybe this is a bonus episode question. But at this time, would this be considered like really doing a big favor? Because I'm willing to bet this woman is probably maybe not necessarily a prostitute because she wants to, but maybe because this is her only option. Hmm. That's an interesting question. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, well, I think we'll see how it plays out, but I have a feeling this is all part of some kind of lesson that Yahweh's going for here. It's good to use people as lessons. Of course. Yeah. 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 You know, he does that all the time. Sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes using people is even more effective than using like linen underwear. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, Yahweh's just trying new things, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. So he says, go take for yourself a wife of prostitution and children of unfaithfulness for the land commits great adultery against Yahweh. Well, there it is. We didn't even have to wait. There's the lesson right there. Wait, the land does great adultery against whom? Yeah, Oh, against Yahweh. Got it. So, but he could have just been like, hey, you see what those prostitutes are doing over there? That's like exactly what the land is doing against me. Well, Mm -hmm. except I actually think that this is an interesting different take from what we were just getting with... Who did we read last? I've already blocked it out of my mind. Ezekiel? (laughs) Uh, Ezekiel, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Uh, With Ezekiel, who is just like so hating on women and being like, you were promiscuous and so therefore we'll kill you and hate you. And in this, it's like, yeah, you've been promiscuous, but like I'm still going to marry you. Mm. Uh, Maybe it's a different kind of message. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where Maybe. it goes. I don't know. Okay. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. So a non... What did he call that? Oh, yeah. A non-child of unfaithfulness? A child of faithfulness? Yeah, it, it did seem to imply that they might be other people's children, but that's not what's happening here because... Yeah. I mean, maybe it is. We don't know. I don't know. But she conceived and bore him a son. Okay. Y- Yahweh said to him, Call his name Jezreel for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel on the house of Jehu, and will cause the kingdom of the house of Israel to cease. It will happen in that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. What? So, what just happened? Okay, so so it sounds like we're also using this child as an object yes, lesson. Yes, yeah. And he's being named after the Valley of Jezreel. So that's cool. Okay, let's, let's see what else. <laughs> she conceived again and bore a daughter. Then he said to him, call her name Lo Ruhama. Lo Ruhama means not loved. Jeez. Uh, Jeez. Yep. <laughs> the object lessons keep coming. Why? Because she's a girl? For I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel that I should in any way pardon them. But well, I will have mercy. What does that have to do with this guy's daughter? Come on. Object lessons all the way through. I'm willing to bet the mom is actually like, sure, honey, sure. And then actually calls the kids different names, the names <laughs> right. she wanted to call her kids. Probably, because he's probably yeah. not the most hands-on dad, let's just be honest. Mm, no, yeah. he's busy talking to God all day. So sure, dad thinks that your name is this, but really we know your name is this. Yeah. Right, which means totally fine and liked. Uh, okay, so 
but I will have mercy on the house of Judah and will save them by Yahweh their God and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now, when she had weaned Lo Ruhama, she conceived and bore a son. He said, call his name Lo Ami, which means not my people. For you are not my people, and I will not be yours. Is he talking to the kid? Is he talking to Hosea? He's saying this to Hosea. Yeah. (sighs) One other thing I should note, actually, a difference that I looked up is that Hosea lived in the northern kingdom of Israel, not the southern kingdom of Judah, which is where a lot of the other prophets we've been talking about. So remember, Israel kind of got captured first, and Judah was the one that held on longer. So anyway. Okay. Israel's, Israel's right out. That's not Hosea's fault. You are not my people and I will not be yours. Yet the number of the children of Israel will be as the sand of the sea, which can't be measured nor numbered. And it will come to pass that in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, they will be called sons of the living God. So it's going to get better? I guess they're going to kind of have a... Again? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The children of Judah and the children of Israel will be gathered together and they will appoint themselves one head and will go up from the land for great will be the day of Jezreel. Is this the sun or is this the place? (laughs) Who knows? Um, I don't know. I guess we'll probably find out. And that's Hosea chapter one. Wow. Off to the races. (laughs) Whoa. What a beginning. What a beginning. Okay. Um, Well... I'm having a hard time determining, does this mean Hosea is a little bit of a jerk or is he cool? Basically, I'm trying to decide, do I give Javier Bardem the bad hair he had in No Country for Old Men so we know he's a villain or do I give him some really sexy hair like he usually has? (laughs) He's been hot in a lot of movies. He's been hot in a lot of my life. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, Vicky Cristina Barcelona. (sighs) Oh boy, yeah. Boy, okay. Yeah. Oh, and then... And eat, pray, love. They put glasses yeah. on him. And, oh, oh, God. Talk about you my love, bosom just fluttering. You also oh. love Harrison Ford in oh. glasses, as I found out. I any just that's a good. It's a good formula, but that's not mm, what we're no. here to talk about. All right, jury's still out. We'll okay. We'll evaluate at the end of this reading today. Does he get the bad hair? Does which, he get the good hair? Which haircut goes on Javier Bardem? Which hair? Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll find out by the end of today. All right, let's move on to chapter two. Say to your brothers, my people, Ami in Hebrew, and to your sisters, my loved one, Ruhama in Hebrew, contend with your mother, contend for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband, and let her put away her prostitution from her face and her adulteries so, from between her breasts. Who, who's, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Who are we talking to here? I don't know, but I'm assuming. Is it his mother? It sounds to your brothers and sisters, so maybe he's saying this to Jezreel? Okay. Is Hosea saying this? I think he's I think it's the object lesson. I think he's addressing more of the land, like the people. What is what does the message have to say? Oh boy. Okay. The message says, rename your brothers God somebody, and rename your sisters all mercy. Haul your mother into court. Accuse her. She is no longer okay. my wife. I am no longer her husband. Okay. Tell her yeah. to quit dressing like a whore, displaying her breasts for sale. Jeez. Calm down, Eugene. I hope you didn't actually do this for the object lesson. I'm I really assuming hope. we'll find out. Boy, Eugene just keeps Eugene's going on getting... here. He's really getting excited about this. I mean... Well, let me yeah. keep going and then you can okay. tell me. Oh, gosh, this is horrible. Okay. Lest I strip her naked and make her bare as in the day that she was born and make her like a wilderness and set her like a dry land and kill her with thirst. Boy. Yeah, trigger warning for sure. Indeed, on her children, I will have no mercy for they are children of unfaithfulness for their mother has played the prostitute. She who conceived them was has done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers who give me bread and my water my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up your way with thorns and I will build a wall against her that she can't find her way. Okay, yeah, boy. So, I mean, I think you... It's a bummer already. I think you nailed it there. But uh, yeah, Eugene, uh, 
Yeah, if she refuses, I'll rip off her clothes and expose her naked as a newborn. Um, yeah, it's just rough. It's rough. I, okay, I'm I'm in denial. I'm having to stick my head in the sand and be like, he's talking metaphorically about the nation of Israel. That's what he's talking about. He's not actually making Hosea do this to this lady. Because if it's, that's the case, Hosea is really racking up some bad hair points. Definitely. Very quickly. Yeah. I'm yeah, I'm kind of thinking maybe not only the bad hair but also bleached blonde like in that Bond movie. Like really bad. Oh, which one was it? was he in like scepters? Yeah, Scep- we can scepter. combine both. Both the <laughs> bad the what bad cut, the bad helmety cut and the bad bleach blonde at the same time. Specter? What is it? He was he was in Skyfall. He was in Skyfall? Yeah. Skyfall. Yeah, okay. yeah that's cool. the one. Okay. <laughs> that's the one. Thank you, Adele. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm assuming this is metaphor. I think we can, we can safely decide that <laughs> for ourselves here. Let's decide that for now and yeah. then see. I okay. guess we'll find out. No one. Okay. The, the chat did not lie. This is one big trigger warning. And mm-hmm. Okay, I'll continue on because then I can get through it. She will follow after her lovers, but she won't overtake them. And she will seek them, but won't find them. Then she will say, I will go and return to my first husband. For then it was better with me than now. Wait, but she like left her husband to be with this guy? This bleach blonde Javier Bardem guy? Yeah, I think... Okay. No, no, no. This is... Sorry, this is... We're not talking about Javier Bardem's wife. We're talking about... Israel's wife? His mother, which maybe is Israel, being married to Yahweh. I see. Okay, I think he's setting up she's going to go prostitute herself to all these other nations and all these other gods and then she's going to be like, oh, I'll come back to Yahweh and I'm willing to bet he's going to be like, Yeah, I think that's what what we're saying up here, yeah. Okay. For she did not know that I gave her the grain, the new wine, and the oil and multiplied to her silver and gold, which they used for Baal. He's obsessed with Baal. Oh, (laughs) yeah. I just have to read you some Eugene here because this is... Okay. Boy. Okay, so... She'll look high and low, but won't find a one. So she chased after her lovers, couldn't find him, right? Then she'll say, I'm going back to my husband, the one I started out with. That was a better life by far than this one. She didn't know that it was I all along who wined and dined and adorned her, that I was the one who dressed her up in the big city fashions and jewelry that she wasted on wild (laughs) Baal orgies. Baal orgies, his favorite thing. (laughs) Okay, I think that... I think that Yahweh's projecting some of his regrets and resentment toward Ashra mm, onto yeah, this yeah, situation. Yeah. This poor Definitely. woman. Yeah, this poor situation. Okay, uh, verse nine. Therefore, I will take back my grain in its time and my new wine in its season and will pluck away my wool and my flax, which should have covered her nakedness. Now, I will uncover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and no one will deliver her out of my hand. I will also cause all her celebrations to cease, her feasts, her new moons, her Sabbaths, and all her solemn assemblies. I will lay waste her vines and her fig trees about which she has said, these are my wages that my lovers have given me, and I will make them a forest, and the animals of the field shall eat them. I will visit her on the days of the balls to which she burned incense, which she decked herself with the earrings and her jewels and went after her lovers and forgot me. He's the most jealous man in the world. <laughs> the worst. In the universe, uh, yeah. says Yahweh. Okay, y'all, <laughs> yes. I- I'm sorry. This I would love to read this entire chapter from Eugene because it's amazing in a terrible way. But well, it's amazing. How about like I don't think we can do moments. that, but if yeah. you pick out yeah. some moments, some choice moments, yeah, you got to pick your favorites. Okay. Um, party time is over. I'm calling a halt to the whole business. Her wild weekends. Wow, and, calling a halt. <laughs> her wild weekends <laughs> and you? unholy holidays. Her fountains, which she bragged. Whoring paid for all this. <laughs> I don't think those words have ever been uttered by any human being. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Um, Oh right. All that sensuous Baal worship and all the promiscuous sex that went with it. Stalking her lovers, dressed to kill, and not a cop. Calm down, Eugene. Boy, boy, really? he's just in a rage. Okay. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. I will give her vineyards from there and the valley of the Acor, Acor? 
A-C-H-O-R, for a door of hope, and she will respond there as in the days of her youth Hmm. and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. It will be in that day, says Yahweh, that you will call me my husband and no longer call me my master. For I will take away the names of the Baals out of her mouth, and they will no more be mentioned by their name. In that day... Okay, hold on. Okay, so wait, (laughs) she's like changing stuff? Or changing her alliance from Baal to God? Yeah, it seems that way. Because remember, she said she was coming back to her husband, and he's gonna... Yeah. So again, Eugene is... Boy, he says... I'm going to take her back out into the wilderness where we had our first date. (laughs) Okay. Uh, (laughs) Yahweh would take someone to the wilderness on the first date. Definitely. She'll respond. It's not creepy at all. She'll respond like she did as a young girl. Those days when she was fresh out of Egypt. God, this is so gross. And then then skipping ahead a little bit, when he says, "You'll, you'll address me as dear husband and not as my slave master. I'll wash out your mouth with soap. Get rid of all the dirty false god names. <laughs> oh, boy. All the Baals out of her mouth. Yeah, okay. Just wash the Baals. It really, out of her mouth. sometimes reading the message, it really shows you that like Madonna oh, horror yeah. complex of like so excited by the dirtiness and so enraged yeah. by the dirtiness at the same exact yeah. time. It just yeah. makes a lot of things make sense about yeah. modern society. Yeah. It's all sure. Eugene's fault. <laughs> it is Eugene's fault. We'll blame it on no, him. Eugene's just... No, I think Eugene is just saying yeah. the quiet parts out loud. Yeah, he's just the messenger. Yeah, he's the mirror being held up to society. Yeah. He is literally writing the message. He is the messenger. Mm-hmm. Okay. In that day, I will make a covenant for them with the animals of the field and with the birds of the sky and with the creeping things of the ground. I will break the bow, the sword, and the battle out of the land and will make them lie down safely. I will betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness, in justice, in loving kindness, and in compassion. I will even betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know Yahweh. Yeah, okay. Ew, no thank you. (laughs) Good insight here. So John Michael in the chat points out that the word Baal means master. And we had talked about that in a bonus. Mm. So I think that section where he said, you'll call me dear husband and not master, he's saying you'll call me Yahweh and not Baal. Baal, interesting. Like, stop I calling see. me so that not, title that's also okay. this name, that's the name of this other guy. Interesting. Okay. Huh. It will happen in that day, I will respond, says Yahweh. I will respond to the heavens, and they will respond to the earth, and the earth will respond to the grain and the new wine and the oil, and they will respond to Jezreel. I will sow her to me in the earth, And I will have mercy to her who had not obtained mercy. And I will tell those who are not my people, you are my people. And they will say, my God. Okay. And that's it. So. Okay. He kind of touched on his anger, but then was like, but then it's all going to get reconciled. And loving kindness. I don't know. I think he's still erring on the side of some bad hair. Oh, yeah. We'll I'm thinking the blonde middle part for sure. Definitely. No question. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I think after that, we need a moment to yeah. collect our thoughts. Take a breath. Refill our yeah. drinks. You're going to need it to make it through the next two chapters, I think. So we're going to take a quick break to talk about some ways that you can support this show. If you're liking this if you're if you're finding this interesting or educational <laughs> i don't know if people come to this show because they like you're it you're right they're it excited is, by it or intrigued i don't know intrigued by it if you know if it keeps you from being bored i had never oh. imagined mm. aspiring to create any kind of content that people would hate watch or hate listen to, but maybe that's... No, I don't... don't That might be the territory we're verging into. I don't know. (laughs) Maybe just once in a while. I don't know. Are we like hate Mm. reading the Bible? Sometimes. I think think sometimes. Maybe sometimes for sure. For sure. I think that's the idea, right? That we're we're coming in and we're, we're critically reading. And we're not hating all of it. We've loved a lot of parts. No. We've even loved some terrible things just because it's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is if you're getting some kind of value out of this, whether it's hate or love or fun or despair, whatever it is, we would love your support bringing more people to the show. Let them know about it. 
maybe give them some disclaimers about what kind of things they're going to get if they sign up to listen to this show. Uh, but we would really appreciate that. Bring them to the live show. We love chatting with you all here. It's great. I love all the insights as well as the jokes that people contribute in the chat while we're recording live. If you want to check that out, you can go to drunkbiblestudy.com slash live and get all the information about how to watch our live shows. And if you really love the show, we would really appreciate your support on Patreon. If you go to patreon.com slash drunkbiblestudy and become one of our parishioners there, we have uh, as a thank you gift, we have things like early releases of episodes, personal toasts on the show, Emily's drink recipes along with pictures, and our undying love. And we're back with the shortest chapter that's ever been written in the Bible. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but this one seems very short. It's five verses. Hosea chapter three. Yahweh said to me, go again, love a woman loved by another and an adulteress, even as Yahweh loves the children of Israel, though they turn to other gods and love cakes of raisins. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, um, is he telling him get another lady? I, <laughs> okay. Yeah, Let's hold back on. up. What? Get another lady who is an adulteress? Okay. Like while she's still married, like go sleep with another lady who's married. And also she better love some freaking raisin cakes. Yeah. Okay. This is okay. Let's yeah, let's unpack the first one first. So Okay. I'm looking at some different translations here, trying to get some insight. And in our translation in the World English Bible, it seems to imply this is uh, love a woman loved by another. So like go take another wife maybe. Okay. But then when I look at other translations, the message says, start all over. Love your wife again. Your wife who's in bed with her latest boyfriend. Your cheating wife. You know, that one. Oh, <laughs> what? It's the same wife, but she's... Being a prostitute. She's cheating. I mean, yeah, I think that's the idea, right? That she was promiscuous when you married her, you know? But then, okay, looking at the NIV, it says, go show your love to your wife again, though she is loved by another man and is an adulteress. King James okay, says... Okay, so we're still talking about Haber or whatever her name was. What is Gomer. it? Gomer. Gomer <laughs> yeah. Blau. Yeah. Uh, King James says, go yet love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel. So that one's a little ambiguous like ours is. Okay. And then the complete Jewish Bible, I really like this. It says, go once more and show love to this wife of yours who's been loved by her boyfriend, to this adulteress. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's nice. Accidental polyamory. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Now, I don't know what this whole thing about cakes of whatever... Yeah, we already did a whole fig thing. Raisins feel yeah, a little bit different. Let's see. The New International Version. Are they not allowed to like raisins? Says they turn to other gods and they love the sacred raisin cakes. Ooh. Sacred, oh, sacred. raisin cakes. That's why. Sacred raisin cakes. Okay. I could go for a sacred raisin mm. cake right now. I don't know about y'all. Mm. Interesting though, in the King James Version, it translates that as they love flagons of wine. Very different oh. kind of connotation there. Is that what a sacred raisin cake is? Still made out of raisins, but not quite the same thing. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Anyway, carry on. We've made it one verse so far. <laughs> so I bought her for myself for 15 pieces of silver and a homer and a half of barley. Bought her to own her or just bought her for her services? Is this a new person? It is really unclear, isn't it? Yeah. I said to her, you shall stay with me many days. You shall not play the prostitute and you shall not be with any other man. I will also be so toward you. So he's... So I think he's singing Roxanne. I think he was just quoting the police there. Uh, he's like, you don't have to put on the red light. You don't have to yeah. eat a raisin yeah. cake. You don't have to eat a raisin cake tonight. Cake tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this like before he gets in with her for the first time? Was all of the, cha the previous chapters, were they just like a preamble to him actually getting with oh, her? Maybe. Oh, like the first one was like the fantasy. It was a prophecy. And now he's actually trying to execute on there it. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That could be it. That first part was all just a setup of like, here's why I'm having you do yeah. this. Then go do it. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm, I don't know. 
Oh, people are saying leaving Las Vegas, which is funny because, yeah, Homer Pyle could be Gomer Pyle, <laughs> could be Elizabeth Shue, and then um, Hosea could be Nicolas Cage, but we've probably already cast Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I want to save Nicolas Cage for a one-off profit because that man makes me uncomfortable, but he is powerful. He is powerful. In casting. Hey, conveniently, we've got a lot of one-off profits coming up. So Exactly. So, okay. All right, well, there we're going to go. save him. Okay. Yeah. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without king and without prince and without sacrifice and without sacred stone and without ephod or idols. Afterward, the children of Israel shall return and seek Yahweh their God and David their king and shall come trembling to Yahweh and to his blessings in the last days. That's the end of the chapter. <sighs> Boy. I don't know what just happened, but okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to bring us home with this last chapter. Chapter four. Do it. Hear the word of Yahweh, you children of Israel, for Yahweh has a charge against the inhabitants of the land. Indeed, there is no truth nor goodness, nor knowledge of God in the land. There is cursing, lying, murder, stealing, and committing adultery. They break boundaries, and bloodshed causes bloodshed. Therefore, the land will mourn, and everyone who dwells therein will waste away. All living things in her, even the animals of the field and the birds of the sky, yes, the fish of the sea, also die. Yet, let no man bring a charge, Neither let any man accuse, for your people are like those who bring charges against a priest. Oh, those, those jerks, yeah. I guess that's a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, boy. How dare we question priests? I can tell who wrote this down. Man, is Hosea the angry prophet? <laughs> They've all been pretty angry. I don't think we could give him that title. Yeah, but some have been, like, wacky. Yeah, all pretty angry and sad. I, I know Jeremiah was, like, the quote-unquote sad prophet, but everyone's been pretty yeah. negative, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You will stumble in the day, and the prophet will also stumble with you in the night, and I will destroy your mother. Oh, calm down. <laughs> My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you, that you be no priest to me. Because you have your God's law, I will also forget your children. As they were multiplied, so they sinned against me. I will change their glory into shame. They feed on the sin of my people and set their heart on their iniquity. It will be like people, like priest, and I will punish them for their ways and will repay them for their deeds. They will eat and not have enough. They will play the prostitute and will not increase because they have abandoned giving to Yahweh. <laughs> Prostitution, <laughs> wine, <laughs> and new wine. Take away understanding. He hates those rice cakes, or not rice cakes, <laughs> raisin cakes. Raisin cakes. <laughs> okay, wait, hang on. According to Eugene, there's kind of a break between the last verse and then that one you just started about the wine and the new wine. I just want to read one line from before that. Mm -hmm. uh, this was not in the World English Bible that you read, but Eugene says, I just wanted to get this in there. He said, they'll eat and be as hungry as ever, have sex and get no satisfaction. <laughs> I can't get no. You had to put sex in. I don't think that was in there. Yeah. It's very jagger. My people consult with their wooded idol and answer to a stick of wood. <laughs> Indeed, the spirit of prostitution has led them astray and they have been unfaithful to their God. Mm. They sacrifice on the tops of the mountains and burn incense on the hills under oaks and poplars and terebinths because its shade is good. Bridge to terebinthia? Terabinthia, yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. This is amazing. Eugene just cannot stop talking about sex. He got started. He got excited in the last chapter. Oh, yeah. He's got to stick with he it. He loves sex. He's definitely only had sex with one person, but he loves it. He loves thinking about it a lot, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's, here's what he says. He says, drunk on sex, they can't find their way home. They've replaced their that God. What happens? I don't know. <laughs> They've replaced... I mean, I thought I'd had sex, but... They're drunk on sex. They can't find their way home. Okay. They've replaced their God with their genitals. Whoa. That's the line I wanted you to uh, understand. <laughs> whoa, is that... Like, so he's taking a stick of wood... Really, to like, oh, yeah, that's it's good. logical, that's and good, dirtier yeah. conclusion. Yeah, I like it. <sighs> there's an Eric Clapton, there's an Aaron, <laughs> there's an Eric Clapton song when he was with the band Blind Faith called 
can't find my way home. And that brings on a whole different oh, meaning yeah. with this. It was about just having so much sex. Yeah, exactly. He was drunk on sex. Beautiful song. It. So, uh. Therefore, your daughters play the prostitute and your brides commit adultery. I will not punish your daughters when they play the prostitute, nor your brides when they commit adultery, hmm. because the men consort with prostitutes and they sacrifice with the shrine prostitutes. Well, that's well, fair. It's like a, yeah. a, a wow. tiny little like single grain of gender equality in this book. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Eugene's even picking up on this a little bit. He's saying, I'm not going after your whoring daughters or the adulterous wives of your son. It's the men who pick up the whores that I'm after. It's fair. Which is very much how, I forget where it was, Norway or Sweden, like really um, changed their policy about sex work a few years ago, where they completely decriminalized prostitution, but it is a crime to pay for prostitution. So it kind of shifted the who can get in trouble to only the the client and not the person doing it. Got it. Still causes some issues for people who are, you know, wanting wanting to intentionally pursue sex work, but that's not... That's not the podcast that we're uh, recording right now. Engaged in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not yet. And the people, the people that does not understand will come to ruin. Though you, Israel, play the prostitute, yet don't let Judah offend and don't come to Gilgal and neither go up to Beth Avon nor swear as Yahweh lives. For Israel has behaved extremely stubbornly like a stubborn heifer. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, cow. <laughs> That's better than than some horrible uh, prostitute analogy. Is, like, sure, I can is. get behind uh, Israel just being a cow. That's like, nah. Amazing. Then how will Yahweh feed them like a lamb in a meadow? Ephraim is joined to idols. Leave him alone. Their drink has become sour. They play the prostitute continually. They left that wine out for a couple days. Yikes. <laughs> Her rulers dearly love their shameful way. The wind has wrapped her up in its wings and they shall be disappointed because of their sacrifices. I hate to say this, everyone, but when is Hosea going to (laughs) die? It only took one episode. Amazing. Uh, I think Um, I feel pretty comfortable giving him the bad hair. Yeah. I'm writing yeah, down, yeah. Love we have an existing document called Drunk Bible Study, colon, the movie, which I have pinned at the top of our Drunk Bible Study Fans and Fellowship Facebook group, if you want to join that, where, yes, I have added Javier Bardem. I think he got the part, but specifically yeah. in parentheses, I put it's Javier Bardem with bad hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, sure. maybe if he turns around and redeems himself, we can give him a haircut and freshen things up, but... I wouldn't put a lot of money on that. No. I think yeah. it's, I'm pretty comfortable leaving him with the bad hair. I, I, I think, just, I, I want to read you a little bit of Eugene. Sorry, go okay. ahead, Em. And then I want to read you some Eugene. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking about the wife situation. I don't know. I feel like Nelly Furtado hasn't been around in a while. So maybe like giving her this part would be helping her out and giving her some work. Mm. Penelope sure. Cruz does not need this work. Yeah, we can save yeah. Penelope Cruz. They don't have to be a package deal. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, okay. Right? They're they're actors. They can, you know, they don't always have to be paired up with their actual wife. No. In fact, for this book, maybe it'd be better for their relationship if they were not yeah. paired <laughs> yeah. together. That's what I'm saying. We're thinking about them, really. Yeah, yeah. it's for them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, tell their agents that. So I just want to read you a little bit of Eugene right at the end here, because he really brings it home strong. And that is, uh, he says, uh, Ephraim is addicted to idols. Let him go. When the beer runs out, it's sex, sex, and more sex. Oh, oh. <laughs> is that how it goes? Oh, this this chapter is just completely rewriting my narrative about sex yeah. and what's supposed to happen. Like you get lost on your way home. It only yeah. happens when the beer runs out. My goodness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So so when the beer runs out, it's sex, sex, and more sex. Bold and sordid debauchery. How they love it. The whirlwind has them in its clutches. Their sex worship leaves them finally impotent. Whoa. <laughs> okay, bro. Calm down. Hachi chachi. Wow. Eugene really. Whew. Boy. Boy, oh boy. That's yeah. fascinating. Truly. <laughs> Truly fascinating. What a... Okay. Uh, what a great start, though. I mean, we had a great yeah. start to Ezekiel also, but... 
the, at mm-hmm. least interesting, exciting. We can't wait for him to die. Like, I think that's a marker of a good, interesting, <laughs> engaging book. And I'm excited for what comes next. I mean, it's going to be over before we know it. So even mm-hmm. as we start to be like, uh, this is getting long-winded, like we're not even going to get there yet. Yeah. It's just, True. it's going to be a hot three ups and we're going to be done. What do you think could possibly happen from here? I don't know. It's going to be more object lessons and that's it. Bada bing, bada bam. Is he going to just keep acquiring wives? Perhaps. Or keep mm. acquiring the same wife? I don't know. <laughs> Reloving yeah. the same wife over and over <laughs> again? Yeah. Hmm. Perhaps. Gosh, I have no idea. Should we give ourselves a palate cleanser or do you have more to say? Yeah. You know, I think the best way to celebrate this start of a new, very short book is with a concert from the Sons of Korra. Wah! Wah! <laughs> <laughs> A song by the Sons of Korah, a song, 87. His foundation is in the holy mountains. Yahweh loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Jacob! (laughs) Glorious things are spoken about you, city of God, Selah. I will record Rahab and Babylon among those who acknowledge me. That was Rahab. Behold. Remember Rahab? Oh, Rahab. Crap. Rahab. Rahab. She was the one that just saying her name would make you Oof. have any mission. Rahab. Behold, Philista, Tyre, and also Ethiopia. This one was born there. Yes, of Zion it will be said, this one and that one was born in her. The Most High himself will establish her. Yahweh will count when he writes up the people's This one was born there, Salah. Those who sing as well as those who dance say, all my springs are in you. All your bass are belong to us. (laughs) (laughs) This is Rahab is a reference to Egypt. I don't know, whatever. Okay. Wow, Dedeker's doing some high kicks over there. That's impressive. Dedeker is kicking. Wow. I'm really excited by that aerobics video. Yeah. Wow. All righty. Um, Okay, yeah, who's taking this next psalm? Oh, it's me. I can't do high kicks anymore. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, Dedeker is. Okay. Okay, next psalm. That is Psalms 88. A song, a psalm by the sons of Korah for the chief musician to the tune of the suffering of affliction. I love that one. A contemplation by He-Man, the Ezraite. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) I see. So this, this yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Sons of Korah covering uh, "What's Going He-Man. On" by He Man. <laughs> okay, I love this. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Feet. Yeah. Yahweh, the God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before you. Let my prayer enter into your presence. Turn your ear to my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, my life draws near to Sheol. I am counted among those who go down into the pit. I am like a man who has no help, set apart among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave whom you remember no more. They are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the lowest pit, in the darkest depths. Your wrath lies heavily on me. You have afflicted me with all your waves. Selah. You have taken my friends from me. You have made me an abomination to them. I am confined and I can't escape. My eyes are he dim. He doesn't sound happy. No, He-Man. not happy. Not a happy man, He-Man. My eyes are dim from grief. I have called on you daily, Yahweh. I have spread out my hands to you. Do you show wonders to the dead? Do the departed spirits rise up and praise you? Selah. Is your loving kindness declared in the grave or your faithfulness in destruction? Are your wonders made known in the dark or your righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But to you, Yahweh, I've cried. Mm. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Yahweh, why do you reject my soul? Why do you hide your face from me? I'm afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer your terrors, I am distracted. Your fierce wrath has gone over me. Your terrors have cut me off. They came around me like water all day long. They completely engulfed me. You have put lover and friend far from me and my friends into darkness. Mm. I feel 
like this is one where they're like, get him off the stage, get him off the stage, get him off the stage. <laughs> He's really um, harsh yeah. on the vibe. No, we don't like it. We don't like it. <laughs> that was the mistake totally. of bringing on He-Man as a guest artist. Just too much of a loose yeah. cannon. Yeah. yeah He-Man yeah. is not doing what we <laughs> wanted him to do. Please <laughs> get him off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Calm down, he is. Well, that was oh, exciting. Boy. Alrighty. I mean... It was exciting. <laughs> it always is exciting. I'm glad that we are moving into this book that will be brief. Yeah. We, our time with Josea is short, yeah. and that is all right. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, then we'll move on to the rest of the 12. How exciting. Oh, Alrighty, boy. everyone. Thank you all for joining us for Bible study today. If you want to join the audience in our live stream shows, follow us on Twitch at Drunk Bible Study or go to drunkbiblestudy.com slash live. If you want even more Drunk Bible Study, including early releases, cocktail recipes, personal toast on the show, and more, become one of our patrons at patreon.com slash drunkbiblestudy. If you enjoy the show, take a moment to subscribe and write us a nice review on iTunes, letting other people know what you like about it. You can also join fellow listeners of the Drunk Bible Study Fans and Fellowship Facebook group. Find us on Twitter at Drunk Bible Cast, on Instagram at Drunk Bible Study, or send us an email to info at drunkbiblestudy.com. Drunk Bible Study is created and produced by Jace Lindgren, Dedeker Winston, and me, Emily Matlack. Our theme song is Book Club by Josh and Anand from their album Home of the The The. For more information, visit us at drunkbiblestudy.com. I made a memory about your dad.